呃比赛的状态怎么样？他说他感觉还可以，但是呃只得了第四名，他觉得稍微有点遗憾。呃，然后我我就问他第二个问题，就是说他保持的这个呃比较好的身材有没有什么样的？呃，秘密，他说的是他每周会训练四次，然后还会有一些其他的就是锻炼来辅助他的这样一个训练。呃，他这次也是第一次来成都，然后他对成都的印象非常好，他说他还会再来成都的。好，感谢我前方的同事为我们带来精彩的采访。那么接下来将要进行的比赛就是女子选手要登场了。很好，出发很稳定。那首先开始的女子组的比赛是女子综合组，那么年龄呢是，呃，我们可以从屏幕上看到，三十五，三十五到四十四，对，三十五到四十四，这也是十个年十个年龄段，对，这也是两个年龄段合在一起比对对啊，对。本身一千五女子一千五这个项目就非常的少，而且呢，她在，呃，她目前来说，呃，还不是奥运会的正式项目，因为要到明年的奥运会开幕开始比赛以后，确定了以后才能出现。所以呢，嗯，根据这个警察这个专，他的这个呃职业来说的话。他是要求要运动员要完成这样距离的比赛。是，那在这一组别当中呢，有两位来自呃咱们东道主的选手，一位是呃中国五道的中国选手胡婷，还有中国选手黄迎春，以及还有二道中国香港的选手潘怡珍。啊，这三位都是咱们呃东道主的选手。印度这个六道这个游在前面的这个运动员是印度的，嗯，这从昨天上午到今，昨天下午到今天，印度印印印度的这几名运动员，包括男运动员来比赛的这几名运动员，水平还是蛮高的。是，这个运动员从第一百开始我就看了一下，他的整个。就保持着一个由中长距离的这个节奏。对，而且你看他第一个一百米其实是游得非常快的哈，相比于其他选手来说。对。就看他到六到七百，看他表表现的怎么样。我们刚刚也给大家介绍过，像一般一千五这样的长距离，对于很多选手来讲，啊，都是基本上把它分为三个阶段，啊，三个五百米来比。啊，第一个五百米，大多数选手可能就按照自己的出发节奏。来进行这个自己的速度的游进，那第二个五百米途中游呢，可能就是保持节奏，那最后一个五百米可能就是要啊、呃、自己来加速加腿来冲刺了。哎，我们从画面中看出他真的很强势哎，七秒一。他的滑屏是平滑滑水的频率是七秒一。我们赵老师还专门把手机掏出来测了一下他的这个滑屏时间。对，<笑>嗯，这作为一个女孩一个中长长中长距离运动员，这个频率不低的，嗯，还挺高的。他这个频率七秒一。竞技水平相当高。呃，对，啊、呃，特别途中游的这个频率，如果他那个频率一直保能够保持下去哈，嗯，这就说明这个运动员训练水平是非常高的。是。呃，说到训练水平，其实通过今天上午，你看在现场我们同事为我们带来的现场的采访，看来，其实很多的这个运动员都表示，自己在平时都是要坚持去训练,训练的，特别是刚刚来自江苏的这位特警，对，给我们讲过他的一天的行程安排，早上练游泳，下午练力量，力量还要练耐力。你想，非常训练是非常的系统，非常一个是非常系统，第二个你想一下，他们其实不是专业运动员，对，他们是有身兼重任的特警，对，在工作之余还要肩负这么大的训练量，可想而知。所以我就说，他们付出的比常人要多。对对对，不，其实不亚于一个专业运动员。是啊，是，而且年龄也在那儿了，对，他们并不很年轻的呀。这个从第一名的这个油的这个频率来看哈，这个技术来看，嗯，呃，它采用的是中前交叉，呃，自由泳的这个滑背呢
它是两倍呃交叉做运动，呃，一只背在水下划水，另一只背在空中移动。它的两个背在空中和水下的交叉点的前后， and when the two hands almost cross, there will be such a crossing point. For long distance games, they would usually have the two hands overlapping with each other in the front of their body. With about 45 points angle from their eyes. For our athlete Sun Yang, 1500 meters, it is very obvious for him to have such a cross point. Then they can give the utmost. Possibilities for their swimming, and also with such a crossing point of two hands, they can stabilize their body. There will be shaking of the body when they are swimming, so with the hands in the front of their body, they can maintain the balance of their body. It's like rolling with the central axis. So for the mid and long distance games, athletes will perform such a technique. For short distance, the key is to have higher frequency, and we can judge that this Indian athlete is well trained. Many firefighters and police officers have such professional training. Some of them even used to be athletes before joining the police station or firefighting station. Now it's the 600 meter for this India athlete. He, she's very professional. We will wait and see her final score. I believe it's going to be good. There is no 1500 meter for females in Olympic Games. Next year, in the Tokyo Games, there will be such a design. So, in the Olympic Games, new games are being added. Seven hundred meter now. For the swimmers, they must have a stronger upper arm and legs. In the recent ten years, we really highlight the training of the core strength in athletes. So, in such strength training, there will be a lot of、uh, professional training courses. For example, isometric training. But for swimming, the water is soft. So they must have dynamic training. When they are using force underwater, they must be able to grasp the force of the water, and they must be flexible. There are a lot of、um, such pulling machines to simulate the water force. 
It's very advanced technology. With those technologies, we can improve the overall strength of those athletes in the training. In long-distance swimming, you could observe that uh, their legs are not moving that much, but actually the force on the legs will be very determinant in their final sprint. To give you an example, the table tennis players, if you go to observe their training, you would hear the sounds, and most of those sounds are about uh, hitting their feet. When they are striking the balls, they have to rely on some forces. So that's why they would usually stamp their feet. And also for such a long distance swimming, it is very high requirement for their forces and strength in the legs. In the 1960s and 1970s, Australian athletes developed new techniques. When they complete one cycle of moves, they would hit two times of their feet. And then gradually that frequency grow to four times. For this Indian athlete, there is no rules in moving her legs. Now she's accelerating the speed. So we cannot find a pattern in moving her legs. So for a very high-skilled athletes and swimmers, he or she must have different skills. And in actual contest, they must adjust their skills. This athlete is really well performing based on how she uses her strength. She is not uh, slowing down compared to the beginning, and she's even accelerating the speed. As to the frequency and the speed, she is much better than the other swimmers in this group. She has finished many circles already. I think she's already 200 meters ahead of the others, or even 300 meters. Compared to lane 5, she's 400 meters ahead. For this group, the final result will be determined by the last one. Obviously, she's accelerating the speed. In the Guangzhou Games, the 1500 meter swimming games for the males were quite competitive. For long distance games, the athletes usually have uh, different levels. So Finally, three athletes were catching up with each other. That game was almost a tie, and such a phenomenon is rarely seen in such long-distance swimming. The higher their skills are, the lesser the difference between the athletes. So if the athletes have different skill levels, then there will be big gap between their final results. The last 300 meter.
This Indian athlete, Mishla, is going to be number one. The speed is maintained as the beginning. That's very high quality swimming. I guess less than 300 meters left for her. At about 700 meters, it's the critical point for breathing. For long distance games like a marathon, track and field, there will be such a critical point. At that point, it's going to be most difficult for breathing. But after that, it will be easier. But for this athlete, there is no change in her frequency, so that's wonderful. Another criteria is to look at their point of getting out of water and getting into the water. The larger the distance between the two places, the better the frequency. Otherwise, it means they have skills in swimming. For the spectators, if you uh, are very professional, you can judge whether this um, athlete is uh, competent enough by observing the stroke that he or she makes. After this turning, she still has 150 meters to go, and uh, upon 100 meter, he will she will be hearing the bells. Right now we can see the referee standing up. <laughs> and the bell rings. Last 100 meters to go. <laughs> In lane six, we have an Indian athlete uh, now doing his last 100 meter. We see that uh, she is picking up speed and improve the increased frequency. I think uh, I estimate that the final result will be about uh, 18 minutes and 30 seconds. You can see she's packing up speed and frequency. Last 100 meter dash, uh, last tw 20 meter dash. But he is. Uh, clearly have an advantage, so I think she will take it easy and finish. We can congratulate the Indian athlete for getting a gold medal. Eighteen minutes three and 33 seconds. Our champion.
The athletes in lane two still has 500 meters to go. So the our champion still has a very um, obvious advantage in it, her capabilities. Because as we mentioned in this in this age group, uh, we actually combined two age groups, 35 to 39 and 40 to 44. I think our champion should be in the age bracket of uh, age 80, uh, 35 to 39. Because we see very few female athletes doing 1500 meters. Um, this is my seventh World Police and Fire Games, and um, I feel this was the, this is the best competition till so far, and uh, we are liking and enjoying China so much. The atmosphere, the hospitality, and everything is so amazing. Thank you for praising. And uh, second, secondly, uh, have you ever uh, do some special preparation for this competition? Oh yes, um, uh, every every year it comes after every two years. So when we go back, we train really hard for the competitions to perform well here. Uh, thirdly, uh, do you have other travel plan uh, after finishing your competition? Uh, yes, I wanted to uh, visit few places. Especially, I wanted to uh, see pandas and all. Uh, but because I have uh, again next competition coming up, so I'm leaving early. So this time, unfortunately, I won't be travel. But I, uh, in my spare time, I went for the shopping and everything. So yeah, it's nice. Thank you for your cooperation and congratulations again. Uh, we asked the three questions. First, what does she think of her performance? She thought that uh, he, she did quite well. This is her seventh time participating in the Games and is proud and happy to be here in China. The second question, whether he ha she has done any preparation. She said that uh, he, she would do a lot of training before each Games. And third question, what's her touring plan? She said that uh, she really look forward to see the pandas. However, this time she has more competitions to attend, so he will she will not be able to do any touring this time. We want to thank uh, her for the interview. So this is her seventh time competing in the Games, telling from uh, her physique and condition, we can see that uh, she is really well shaped. She said that uh, she wanted to see the pandas, however, because uh, there are more events, uh, she has to finish the competitions first.